Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to slipstream Service Pack 1 and IE9 into your Windows 7 uh, disk. Now you can either do 32-bit or 64-bit, it doesn't really matter, but you're going to need to have two things. First of all, you're going to need to have the Service Pack 1 patch and you're going to need to have a piece of software called RT7 Lite. You can get it from this website here. You need to come all the way down to the bottom and make sure you're on the bit that says uh, 2.60 build okay do not get the earlier build because you will not be able to slipstream it in okay once you've got that you're going to need to have your actual patch to actually slipstream it in now you can use one of these ones at the bottom but you're going to need a uh, windows uh, genuine advantage to make sure that you've got a genuine copy unless you can find a place where to download it from okay but this is what it will look like if you've got the the real deal and just download the 64-bit or the 32-bit version okay once we've got that we're going to need to install the software and I've already downloaded mine so I'm just going to go ahead and install and this bit's pretty painless but um, occasionally this software does freeze a little bit and it says not responding just leave it alone let it do its thing it does take a lot of resources uh, and it just looks like it's locked up but it will come back so just let it uh, do its thing okay let me install this this process is a little bit lengthy so I will be pausing throughout the video just to let it catch up and then we'll go from there so the first thing we're going to do also I forgot to mention you're going to need three things not two things you're going to need to also have a Windows 7 disk okay so we can actually uh, slipstream into that was the most important bit so let's get started um, so I'm going to fire up this program and once this opens up this is what it looks like okay so what we need to do now is come to this location now I'm going to uh, put this um, priority bit here to high and I'm also going to browse and I want the uh, path there so what I'm going to do is go to my CD drive which I've got my CD Windows CD in there as you can see okay so I'm going to click on that and click OK let that do its thing okay this operation cannot be performed first save the files okay so click OK and we're going to create a new uh, directory here and we're going to actually call this directory let's see we're gonna to go to C root directory I think um, where are we there and we're gonna call this uh, win 7 SP1 you can call yours what you like really but that's why I'm gonna be calling mine and then click OK and it will go to that location it's gonna take all the files off the disk and then rip them off and put them into that folder okay so I'll pause the video at this stage and let it finish its job otherwise we'll be uh, watching paint dry here so I'll see you back in a sec okay so that's now ripped the uh, CD off onto my R drive into my C root directory what do we need to do now is just let this uh, sort itself out it does sort of idle a little bit for a while and then it will suddenly give us the uh, pop-up window where we can actually add in what we need to add in now sometimes it's hidden behind the back there but just let it sort itself out okay so here we have we need to pick which version we've got and we're going to be using home premium for this version and we're going to be clicking on service pack make sure the ticks in there as you won't get the service pack installed okay so what we need to do now is click OK Now you can see it's sort of locking up a little bit there it sort of does that this software but it does work but it's not the uh, smoothest of operations I must admit okay so now we're just gonna uh, let this integrate so what we need to do is uh, we need to browse for our location for our file that we've downloaded and I've got mine in my C root directory I've moved it to there it's a lot more easier to, to sort out and this is the file we want click OK there or open and then we're going to click on start and let that integrate 
So I'll just let that do its thing. You'll see a little green bar pulling along the bottom here and that means it's integrating into the Windows 7 disk that's on the drive now. As you can see it's preparing and this will take a bit of time so I'm going to pause the video at this stage. OK that's starting to install now very slowly but we'll leave that to do its thing. One important note here that I want to point out is that you can't integrate 64-bit service packs into a 30-bit, 32-bit uh, operating system. Okay, so you need to make sure that you have got the right version, otherwise it won't work. Okay, so I'm just going to let this do its thing. Go and make yourself a cup of tea, and I'll be back in a sec. Okay, see we're 34% in now, and this has taken uh, a fair bit of time to do so far. Uh, another important uh, part to look for as well is, as you see, architecture 32-bit. Uh, that's the operating system where we've ripped off the CD, and as you can see, service pack details is 32-bit. So you can always uh, make sure that you're getting the right versions there. So make sure this is not 64-bit and this is 32-bit, otherwise it won't work. Okay, so I'll just let this carry on installing and hopefully it won't be too much more time. Okay so that's now complete, that did take some considerable time but as you can see here now it's saying service pack integrated successfully so what we want to do is proceed like so and now this will load the image down the bottom there you can see it loading the image this will take some time again remaining four minutes just let this do its thing and uh, I'll pause the video at this stage. Okay, so that's just now getting the information as you can see. It's loaded the image and it's now starting to get the information. So we'll just let that uh, set up its environment now. And that's going to take another minute. So it's just going through these little procedures that it needs to do to integrate. I don't know the ins and outs of it all, but all you've got to do here is read the bottom here what it's doing. And I'm sure it's loading packages now. So I'm just going to pause at this stage. OK, so that's the loading complete. So that's that part completed. And this is the part where we can do other stuff now. We can actually integrate our Inter Explorer 9 um, and go from there, really. So what we want to do is we want to click on Task. And then we also want to click on here, Integration. OK and once we've done that we can then start to click on the ISO bootable there that's the next thing we want to do and in integration we can come here and we need to add an update okay so what we need to do is add in our update that we require so we want to click on here uh, add and then we want to come into our C root directory or wherever you've got your IE9 I'm going to click open there Okay, and then you should see something like that. Okay, and then we're going to apply that. And then that's going to install that there, integration. Okay, and then once that's done, so we want to uh, build current image only. Don't want to do all images, and then we're just going to commit this and then set the uh, priority there click commit and it's just to, it going to integrate that part okay because we don't want to do the whole lot again it shouldn't take too long this bit and while that's installing we can see here we've now got uh, up the top here you can see home premium and it's saying service pack one so we now can uh, successfully slipstream that into that as you can see there so that will be our new build once we've rebuilt it okay so that's now integrated okay now going to finish this is the next part we need to do because we're creating an image as well That we're going to be creating so we can just then burn that ISO image to a CD ok 
okay so that's now building the image now as you can see down the bottom here it's saying this operation will take nearly 60 to 90 minutes to complete um, so I'm hoping it's not going to take that long but uh, if it does at least it's uh, all done and we can just burn that to a CD okay so that part is now complete we can click on finish um, but what we want to do here is uh, just want to check here and just make sure everything has been okayed okay so what I want to do here is come into ISO bootable at the bottom create an image here and uh, you can either burn it straight to CD if you require just go to the settings here and change it I'm just going to make an ISO image here and then we're going to call this uh, I don't know, Win7 SP1 and I'm going to save that into my C root directory in here it doesn't really matter and click save We're just going to let that create this image now for us to build, uh, for us to burn, and then we should be okay. Okay, so that's the image now created successfully. Click OK, and I can click Finish. Say yes to that. It's uh, cleaning up. Now we can go to my computer, C drive, and then go into my Win7 SP1. If I look in there, you can see an ISO image there with all our files inside there 2.58 gigabytes uh, and then what we need to do now is just burn this image now let's open it up with uh, Win7 uh, 7 zip sorry and as you can see there's all the files in there okay this is what it's done it's created this and this has got our member our IE9 um, operate uh, our IE9 browser in there and also our service pack has been slipstreamed in there so once we build that that will be the ultimate CD and all updated. Okay, so I hope you enjoy these videos. My name is Brian from brightech.co.uk. If you enjoy my videos, please remember hit the subscribe button, guys. And also, if you haven't joined our forums yet, then head over there and start posting. Thanks again for watching, guys. Thanks for all your support. Bye for now.